In this video, we're gonna discuss some rules for having a roommate on your cruise ship cabin. Now, whether or not you have been BFFs and best buddies with your cabins, old time friends, but just have never traveled with them, or if you met your cruise cabin mate on a app or in a Facebook group for solo travelers and you wanted to save some bucks and travel together, well, you'll wanna follow some of these rules so that you will have smooth sailing. But if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Alana. I love to do videos all about cruises, cruise news, cruise vlogs, even cruise live streams every single week. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss another upload. So our first thing that you will wanna bring up with your cabin mate is some things before the cruise, finding out whether or not you two are actually really compatible to share a cabin. You don't wanna spoil your entire vacation by being on opposite schedules and having really a lot of differences so we'll dive right into those. And the first one is finding out if one is a night owl and another is an early bird. Figuring out what your internal clocks are and what your schedules are really like will help you because you wanna enjoy your vacation, right? If one of you is a night owl and likes to party and hit up the disco and enjoy some of the dancing and coming back, you might be a little rowdy and even wanting to continue the party late into the night. And if the other one is already fast asleep when you come back, it could really be upsetting to one another if you guys aren't on the same page. So that is something you'll wanna hash out beforehand and figure out how you would really spend your time and whether or not if one is a night owl or an early bird. Now our second reason you'll wanna have a conversation is discussing some of your sleeping habits. Now, what if you're a big snorer? You're gonna to wanna to admit this ahead of time. Now, you may not even know you snore, but people have probably told you once in your life that you occasionally snore once in a while. I know maybe I could be a victim of it if I'm really, really tired, but it's not a usual every night occurrence. So regardless, you might want to kind of just admit to it like, hey, this could happen, or yes, I snore every single night and it is very loud. Please do bring your earplugs or we might have a problem. So just kind of admitting to, to that upfront will help either your roommate bring some earplugs and be prepared for it, or you know, you could find a different roommate who you both snore and then you won't know any difference. So keep that open conversation with your cabin mate and you'll wanna also admit if you are a sleep talker or if you have any unusual behaviors like waking up in the middle of the night, being disoriented and, and not knowing where you are. Or if you have a CPAP machine, those can actually make a little bit of noise and a little bit of humming in the background that could be annoying for someone if they like it to be completely silent when they're sleeping. So keeping those conversations open and knowing whether or not you either pack the nasal strips, the earplugs, or anything in that regard, having those conversations early ahead of time will help you have a better cruise. Now our next tip is discussing being au naturel. And that means really how comfortable are you in your own skin and how comfortable are you with seeing other people's skin and particularly your roommates. How much of it do you wanna see? Now this is where you'll wanna just uh, understand whether or not you'll be changing in the bathroom or if you don't mind stripping down and changing your clothes right in the cabin when they are there. Now, depending on your friendship level and whether or not you just met them, these are some things that you'll just wanna kinda work out and see whether or not and know your comfort level so that you can enjoy your cruise. Also keep in mind, some people like to even sleep in the nude. So there could be that as well that you'll wanna discuss. Our next tip is finding your organizational skills and keeping those cabins a little bit tidy. Now, not everyone is as organized as you are or disorganized as you are, but maybe finding that invisible line that you mark the cabin down the middle and say, this is your side, this is my side, and we'll split the closets and the drawers and have our own personal spaces to get organized or disorganized as we like, maybe that will work for you. But if you perhaps need any more hangers for the closet, you can always ask your stateroom host, or if you wanna just be mindful not to keep all of your belongings on perhaps their bed or on their side of the counter. You'll just wanna be mindful of that so that you have your own personal space and you're keeping the room or your side of the room as tidy as possible. And keep in mind, you don't wanna be tripping over shoes in the middle of the night, making your way to the bathroom, whether or not they're your shoes or your roommates, that could cause some problems. Now our next tip plays off our previous one where you want to keep the cabin a bit tidy so you can charge all of your devices. Whether you wanna charge your phone, your laptop, or your camera, there's usually a limited amount of cabin space and counter space with those outlets in your cabin. 
pro tip, look out for the outlet that is by the bed. Some cruise ships have them. Sometimes it's only on one side of the bed or it's even in your your phone, not your cell phone, but the regular phone in the, cab in, the, in the cabin. On the side, there's a little USB port where you can charge your phone. If, if they don't have them on the USB ports on the nightstand, they might have one there. Be the first one in the cabin so you can claim that side of the room. They won't know any different, but then you can charge your phone right by the bed. But regardless, whether or not it has it or not, you might want to invest in a USB charging port. These are really great so you can charge up to six or seven devices all at once through that USB port. That way you don't have to take turns and worry about whose phone is losing juice and I'm only at 30%. Well, I'm only at 15. You can charge your phones and all your devices and not have to worry about going out on your excursion and having dead batteries. So keeping the counters kind of clean are important so you can charge all of your devices and have all of them being charged and you'll be good to go. Our next tip is to discuss some of the bathroom preferences that you may have. Perhaps you take very long showers and this might not be conducive to your roommate if they're trying to get ready at the same time as you are. Two hours later. You have to be off the ship at seven o'clock for your excursion and you both wanna take a shower in the morning. You might wanna discuss one person taking a shower in the morning, one person taking a shower in the evening, understanding your schedules so that you can get ready in time. Also, those bathrooms are rather small. So with this, you wanna take note of all of your toiletry items and how you're gonna keep organized in that very small space, often with limited counter space as well to put some of those toiletry items. One of my favorite ways is to bring a hanger organizer so you can hang it on some of the towel racks and then have my deodorants and my makeup all in this little bag here compartmentalized so I can stay organized and it's off of the counter. Another thing you can do is also bring a shoe organizing rack. I know these are pretty popular with some people and they have all the different little options for you to keep all the different organizers inside and different types of all of your items and toiletries, cosmetics organized so you can have your separate spaces and you won't have to worry about hogging all of the counter. Now our next tip, keeping on with the bathroom is remembering to bring some of that toilet deodorizer. I'm talking about the infamous poopery spray. Whether or not you remember the bring and pack the poopery or you bring a little can of air freshener or any other type of thing, you'll wanna keep the bathroom fresh because again, those tight small spaces, there's not a lot of airflow. And especially if you're in an inside cabin, it's hard to clean the air of any type of odor. Our next tip is whether or not you sleep with the lights on or the lights off. A lot of times people will even sleep with the TV on for a little bit of back noise or white noise in the background. So that light could bother you or leaving the bathroom light on could be too dark. So whether the lights or the noises are too much for you or whether or not you require a bit of white noise and even sleep with a sound machine, you'll wanna discuss these because these are the type of preferences that could really ruin your your vacation if you're not getting enough proper sleep. Also keep in mind, a lot of times there are bedtime reading lights. So if you're perhaps reading a book or a magazine or your Kindle before you go to bed, a lot of times those nighttime reading lights are on. So you want to use those instead of the overhead lights. So you're not keeping your cabin mate up the whole night when you guys are both trying to go to bed. Our next tip is keeping those blurred lines of communication open. We don't want the blurred lines where we don't know whether or not your cruise cabin mate is going to want to hang out all the time and perhaps you need some of that alone personal space. Understanding your habits and theirs will keep the communication open and keep the feelings from possibly being hurt. Perhaps when you book a cabin with a, a travel mate like this, you might perhaps think that you're gonna be spending a lot of time with them and understanding of whether or not you want to be hanging out all the time or you wanna just grab breakfast and then go do your own things from each other, that's okay too. It's just kind of nice to know whether or not what the expectations really are. This is kind of nice to discuss and having those communications open so you don't think anyone's being avoiding or doing anything kind of unintentional and can kind of cause some friction later down the line of, hey, why are you ignoring me? And really you're not ignoring them, you're just enjoying your vacation on your own. So keeping those communication open will allow you to not blur any of the lines. 
Our last and final rule for you and your cruise mate is to understand the rules for romance and understanding where those boundaries really lay. If you happen to find your soulmate on the cruise and you wanna spend some alone time back in your cabin, you'll wanna make sure that you're not being barged in by your roommate or whether or not you're barging in on them, vice versa. Now, understanding whether or not the rules for this and whether or not a stranger would be allowed back into your cabin, maybe perhaps that's completely off limits or regardless, finding some time and understanding ahead of time is kind of good to understand. So that way you're not leading yourself into a potentially awkward situation of someone stumbling upon you during an intimate time. So I hope you enjoyed these 10 tips for you not to cramp your style or your roommate's style where you share a cabin on a cruise, hoping that you will have smooth sailing all throughout if you follow all of these tips. And if you're a brand new cruiser, I urge you to check out in the links in the cards or in the description box below, 25 tips for not making any rookie mistakes on your cruise. So if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. Let us know in the comments below where you are going with your roommate and what your cruise is. We can't wait to share our cruise countdowns with you and make sure you check out these other two videos as well that I think you might enjoy. Until next time, ciao for now.